fifth video in the series where I'm going to talk about Yammer as a collaboration tool for teams within Office 365 customer bases. Now we've already talked about Microsoft Teams, Groups in Outlook, and SharePoint as a mechanism to do team collaboration. This video is going to focus really deep on pros and cons and so forth on Yammer. Now, out of the blog post that we posted on Tuesday, I think the most vocal group behind team collaboration was the Yammer MVPs. And they're definitely worth reading the comments for the opinions of those people on why they think Yammer is a real valid uh, choice and that it isn't at threats with Teams or isn't at threats with SharePoint and Groups and Outlook. So definitely give those comments a read. I'm gonna try and bundle those up and take in the feedback from them as well as uh, take on the original impressions I had on the pros and cons of Yammer as well. So the first thing really is, is Yammer was acquired by Microsoft. It was a standalone company in the Valley and it was growing at an exponential rate. One of the key reasons it was doing that was it had this freemium premium model which allowed people to use Yammer in their organization just by signing up with a corporate email address. Slack had a similar model and the growth rates were enormous, they were huge. Now when Yammer was acquired, um, I think the issue, and I saw it internally with other acquisitions when I was at Microsoft, is that they have to kind of blend these two cultures of a startup company in the valley to a corporate kind of behemoth that's been in the industry for a long time. And there was definite benefits of Yammer being on its own and kind of reaching out and integrating with these big external companies like Google and Microsoft and so forth. But I think when it integrated in, kind of there was a lot of pressure for them to uh, move their data centers so that they were in Azure, so they could have them in all the regions and reach the compliance. It needed to kind of authenticate with Azure AD and it needed to kind of be embedded with OneDrive for Business Documents and it needs to be able to be embedded in um, SharePoint as a web part so they could deprecate SharePoint news feeds. There was a bunch of things that had to happen. And unfortunately, I think what that's meant is that the innovation of Yammer hasn't gone as far as I think it would have gone if Yammer had stayed as an independent company, which I think is a great shame because if you speak to anyone from Yammer, they get it. Like they totally understand it's not just a technology piece, that there's a lot of cultural stuff around it and that you need these customer success managers and these community managers in your organization to make these types of tools successful. And they don't naturally grow uh, exponentially without a little bit of guidance and handholding. Now, they do in certain areas of the organization, but there's a lot of training and kind of, uh, I guess, evangelizing you have to do within your organization to make those work. Now, Yammer is essentially, uh, I would, the bluntest way to say it is it was a Facebook clone for the organization. It'll be interesting with the Facebook for work, which is more of the commercial targeted product now, how similar that kind of stays to Facebook consumer and what kind of overlap that has with what Yammer have been doing as well. So it's really an enterprise social network. It's very similar to Facebook. You make posts on walls, you make posts in groups, much like you do in Facebook consumer. And I guess the thing is there's less of a um, learning curve to use Yammer because it's very similar to Facebook. Now, most generations are using Facebook, whether it's you know, grandparents talking to their grandchildren, or it's kind of millennials kind of talking together um, in a non-work setting, or in a mixed mash of even commercial industries talking to the other as well. Now, that's definitely a benefit in terms of the adoption and bringing people into Yammer to work with it. One of the other things that I forgot to put in my blog post, which was pointed out by Melanie on the comments, was that I didn't mention that you don't have to do this via Yammer in the web browser or a Yammer on a mobile app. One of the advantages of Yammer is that you can subscribe to a Yammer group and tell it to email you notifications of messages that come through where you get app mentioned or certain tags come through. I didn't have to go back into Yammer. I can respond to those emails and it'll automatically post those things into Yammer. So that's really useful for people that are maybe very email centric. So there is a little bit of a pro overlap here where you know I, my main push for Yammer is if they're used to social networks and it's a company wide, organizational wide way of doing communication, that Yammer is the best fit. Because groups in Outlook really doesn't have this notion of an all company group that everyone joins and can communicate with. Yammer is really designed for that all company wide collaboration effort and kind of engagement effort. Uh, Teams doesn't because it has that 600 member limit right now and I don't think it'll ever be at the reach of all company wide anyway because it's not designed for that mechanism. That's kind of where Microsoft is stating it as well. So I think that um, this notion of being able to jump in via email is really useful from a Yammer feature perspective. So thanks for the guys who are pointing out in the blog comments. Now in addition to that, Yammer has tagging. So as I'm writing my comments, I can kind of hashtag in the comments. 
And then if I'm following those tags, I'll be notified. It doesn't matter where that conversation is happening. If it's in a Yammer group that I have access to either publicly or I'm a member of, or it's happening in the main company feed, I'll be getting those notifications and the search and the views that I have within, um, within the Yammer product will allow me to discover those a lot easier. I can also go and add those topics to things that I've found as well. So other people can kind of add to the folksonomy of various different messages and replies um, to help discover, discoverability even more across group, which I think is a really powerful benefit you don't get in any of the other systems as well as Yammer has done it. And then lastly, from a pro that I think is really powerful, is this notion of polls. Often I find in organizations, especially in teams when they're working on project work, is they want to throw things out there and get a bit of a gauge of like, is it A, B, C, or D? And like kind of get people to vote. It's super simple to add a poll into Yammer. And I think that's a definite engagement tool that you can use, not just in a small project team for collaboration, but even larger kind of subject matter expert type groups or special interest groups within your org, or even all company things where you just want to field and get people to collaborate at that mass scale. So I think they're some of the great things about Yammer and the uses that it can have in your organization. Now, I am on a lot of different social networks and recently I've kind of started to work out where I'm getting the most value and, and getting to the point where I'm uninstalling apps off my mobile phone to the social networks where I'm not been getting that value. And so keeping up with those social networks is hard. One of the big things I found with Yammer, and they have improved it in the last few months actually with the inbox, is the ability to kind of mark things as read and not have to kind of click in, read the message, go back, click into the next one, read the message and go back. You can kind of read a lot of it in that inbox view now, and you've even got the ability to mark all as read, which was a feature for a long time as asked for. And for whatever reason, Yammer didn't implement it until very, very recently. And that's been a request for a long, long time uh, by a lot of customers to kind of try and keep up. So I think with Yammer, it's very hard to kind of, unless you're on the pulse every day, if you try and come back to it in a few days or even a week, um, especially when I was at Microsoft where Yammer is used very heavily, um, I found myself having to subscribe to emails and doing that kind of triaging of keeping up inside Outlook emails, which kind of defeats the point of um, using Yammer as that platform in the first place. Now, the other aspect of Yammer is, is that the governance controls, much like some of the other preview products like Microsoft Teams, doesn't have all the toggles and bells and whistles that maybe organizations need to control. So for instance, one of the things that really surprises me still is that there's no way to flag comments or even maybe delete them uh, or block them as a, as a normal employee that's just trying to make sure that things don't get out of control. There was a few times in Microsoft where some threads went really off the wire in our CEO conversation groups where um, it would have been nice to be able to just kind of flag those things as, nah, that's not really appropriate for the entire company to see. Let's report this to HR. And I get the whole idea of being open and you know being trusting of your employees and so forth, but some companies aren't quite there yet. And so the, that option to be able to have a flagging capability as a feature in Yammer would have been great to be able to switch on. Now the search, and again, these comments came up from the Yammer MVPs in the blog post was that, I personally found it extremely hard to find anything in Yammer. I knew that those conversations had happened, but for whatever reason, they never came up in the search results. Uh, when the Office 365 network was actually in Yammer as an external network, it was extremely hard to, to kind of find those things. And since they've moved over to this new technical community platform, which is not running inside Yammer, and I'm not quite sure whether search was a big player in that or whether there was other reasons for doing that, but I think not just myself, but other people have given me feedback at customer sites that discovering things in Yammer can be hard just on a freeform text search, uh, which you wouldn't really expect um, from a platform that has a lot of field of information coming through that you want to kind of narrow down with search results. Now, I guess the big bugbear for me is the direction. Much like I said in the SharePoint video, is where is Yammer going? Where, how is it going to stay relevant with Teams? As a hypothetical, if Teams supported external users, it supported the ability to have all of the company in one particular team, and um, it allowed you to uh, share content via a permalink reference to a thread or a document or attachment or so forth. How is it different to, to Microsoft Teams? What, where is the Yammer Microsoft Teams overlap stopping? And I think that the teams have got to do a, a tremendous job now to make sure that you know, these two go on a path where they are very different. And I don't believe the high velocity uh, marker um, isn't something you could attribute to Yammer as well. 
I can work in a high velocity team in Yammer as much as I can in Teams. Um, so I'm not sure that division is, is a relevant one as a way of drawing the line in the sand. And so it'd be really interesting to see moving forward how those two products and offerings within Office 365 for team collaboration evolves in the next six months to a year. So I'm really looking forward to that. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, there's one more in this series. There's a bunch before in this series that talk about the other products. Please subscribe to our video channel with YouTube and also follow us on Twitter at Hyperfish. Thank you.